Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for our webinar on understanding rejected billings and reconciliation in Ontario. Today, we will share some tips on how to manage your rejected billings. We will also provide a look at the rejected billings module in Dr. Care's practice care report and compare it to the error report that you received from the ministry. Let me start by introducing myself. I'm Maral Sanasian, the Director of Client Success at Dr. Care. Dr. Care is the largest provider of billing and practice support for over 2,500 physicians across Canada. On average, we have helped doctors recover $25,000 to $30,000 of revenue per year. Our solutions and services are designed to help doctors maximize their revenue, improve patient care, and grow their practice. During today's session, our goal is to provide insight on how you can utilize the Ministry Error Report data in a much more effective way and ensure that you address errors as efficiently as possible so that you're not leaving any revenue on the table. We see doctors lose as much as $1,000 in rejected errors every month, if not more. Before we begin this webinar, we wanted to share some updates from the Physician Services Agreement. Effective April 1st, 2023, claims for services rendered must be submitted within three months versus six months. So in our discussion of this webinar, whenever we do mention that doctors must submit their codes in six months, it will be three months starting next year. In addition to that, once submitted, claims will not expire i.e. you have unlimited time to fix errors so long as the original claim is submitted within three months of the date of service. Therefore, physicians will be able to get paid for the services they rendered if it takes longer than six months to correct the errors. The submission period for remittance advice inquiries, also known as RAIs, are extended from four months from the date of the remittance advice to seven months from the date of the RA. Please note that the upcoming three-month retroactive billing time limit also applies to enrollment and derostering codes, the Q200, Q202, and the Q402. Now, let's go back to our webinar. Here is our agenda for this webinar. First, we'll take a quick moment to review primary care errors. Second, we'll show you how to read a ministry error report and how to contrast this to how it's reported in our practice care report. In this portion of the webinar, you'll get many insights into our best practices and the type of error data you should compile and regularly review to ensure that you keep the errors to a minimum. And lastly, we'll step through three common errors and show you how to fix them. Our practice care reports provide visibility into a doctor's practice with actionable insights that are easy to read and digest. We generate reports that help family physicians improve on billing optimization roster management, bonus optimization, preventive care support, and automated billing submissions. Practice care goes beyond just handing you a report monthly. Doctors are now a part of an interactive, intuitive, and responsive program where doctor care is helping you manage all aspects of your practice. Like the Ministry RA, you are all familiar with the report shown on the screen. This is the ministry error report that you receive and review two business days after submitting your billings to the ministry. We'll use this sample of the ministry error report throughout this webinar. Let's take a moment to do a quick recap on the definition of an error for those of you who are new to primary care practice billing. Errors are rejected claims with the appropriate error code for correction. They can be claims that are not paid or paid in an amount that is not equal to the amount billed or paid as a different code and fee, which is an over or an underpayment. For this webinar, we are going to focus on three-digit errors. Here's a quick recap on the definition of a three-digit error. Three-digit alphanumeric codes are rejected claims with the appropriate error codes reported to you in the ministry error report. These claims are flagged by the ministry system and must be corrected and resubmitted to be considered for payment. Here are the most common error codes that we have seen through working with our doctors. We will focus on the three common errors highlighted on this slide, which are the EH2, the A2A, the PAA, and we're going to show you how to fix them. But first, let's go back to discussing the ministry's error report. 
The Ministry Error Report is a separate file from the remittance advice, also known as the RA. Every time you submit your bills, the Ministry will check if your scenario is valid. And if it is not, you will get this error report, typically two business days later. The Ministry Error Report is like the Ministry RA in format. It's a text-only file that is scrambled with text and numbers. It is quite laborious to handle, as each time you receive this report, you must decipher where everything is on the file, identify what each error means, and then try to fix the error line by line. Doctors submit their codes depending on their frequency preference, for example, every day or every week. Every time a doctor submits their codes, they receive an error report if there is a rejection. If a doctor submits more than once a month, they may be getting multiple reports monthly. Even if you only submit once a month, which we don't recommend as a best practice, and we'll explain why a little bit later in the webinar, the one error report you do receive from the ministry may contain many lines of text that you would need to sift through and address. This is what you face with every error report from the ministry. First, it's hard to read and understand. Second, there is an action required behind these errors. If you don't follow through on understanding and then acting on the information, you miss out on the dollar amount for that claim. So how can you fast track past reading and understanding these reports and get to the parts with enough actionable insights for you to fix the errors and go back to your day job, which is caring for patients? This is where we can help. Let's discuss the Rejected Billing and Outstanding Errors module that can be found in our nine module practice care report. All the modules in our report are designed to help you more comprehensively address key areas of focus in your faux billing. These modules contain analytics and actionable insights with recommendations from doctor care. The Rejected Billing Outstanding Errors module has several pages of critical billing error information for your practice. The module was developed to help doctors gain visibility into the total amount of outstanding revenue due to rejections when billing for work you've done. Many of our doctors use various software tools to handle their errors, which are not always clear and easy to use. Our module is designed to provide actual and more precise insights to help doctors recover the outstanding revenue more efficiently. Simply put, it is the best way to read and fix your rejected errors. On the screen here, you see the section of the practice care report containing the rejected billing and outstanding errors module. These easy to read pages contain all of your outstanding errors in one location rather than multiple text files from the ministry. And on top of that, the information is summarized and presented in dollar figures with real service dates, patient names, subtotals, and more. It is not just plain text line item by line item, as is the case with a single error report from the ministry. This module shows you how much revenue is outstanding due to rejected billings and it will help you easily monitor your errors to make sure that you and your staff are on top of them. We like to think of this error module in the report as your catch-all or safety net because it makes sure that nothing slips through the cracks. You may have processes and approaches to correcting your errors, but what we have found over the years of directly working with more than 2,500 doctors is that they are typically leaving revenue on the table. We want to help and provide you with the tools to ensure that you're getting paid for the care that you're providing. Let's dive in and step through how our rejected billings and outstanding errors module in our practice care reports contrast with the ministry error reports. So to the left, you see a standard ministry error report. This is all you get from the ministry on any rejected billings each time you submit. No summary information, no analysis, no insights just line by item by line item of individual error codes. Now let's contrast this to our report module on the right of your screen. At the top of our report module, you see immediately how much is outstanding due to rejected billings. This is the total revenue that you are missing out on. From here, you can then see the outstanding errors revenue amount by month. We ordered the errors chronologically from oldest at the top, to newest at the bottom so that you can prioritize the older ones and address them more immediately before they become stale dated. After that, we have outstanding errors by error code. This is where you can get a quick summary of the number of errors for each code type. 
Contrast this with the ministry files, where you would need to manually compile the summary error reports yourself. We also provide the details of each code that is outstanding and have grouped them by the error explanation so that it's more efficient for you to address each error. As you can see on your screen, the report is comprehensive in showing you all the outstanding errors. Now let's show you how to read both reports. Like before, on the left is the ministry error report and on the right is our practice care error report module. Let's go through an example of reading a line of information on each report. As our example, we'll use the error code EH2. On the ministry report, you can find the error codes listed one at a time for each patient. In contrast, we report all patients for that specific error code in our table. On the ministry report, you find patient information on the ministry here in the blue box in the left. On the right, is where you can see the patient information in our report in the corresponding blue box. Back to the ministry report. Here's where you find the rejected service code in the green box. And here's where it is on our report on the right in the corresponding green box. The same goes for the rejected amount submitted and the rejected service date in the yellow and purple boxes respectively. Notice throughout the ministry report that everything is a bunch of codes strung together. In our report, there is an easy to read table with headers and the information is laid out in its correct format with dates, dollar figures, or words. In addition, we also rank the errors from oldest at the top to newest at the bottom within our tables to ensure that you address the top lines immediately as you only have six months since the billing service date to fix them. We also provide additional information, such as the patient's full name, whether a patient is currently rostered, and their version codes. If none is listed, that means the code was missing. And if a version code is listed, it is the wrong version code. So we just went through the comparison for one error. You may be thinking, OK, I can do this. Now I understand how to break down and decipher the text on the ministry's error report. But imagine this scenario. You submit your billings once a week, which is what we see most often with the doctors that we work with. You don't have time to address the ministry's error reports that come to you after each weekly submission, which usually arrive two business days later. You keep submitting your billings once a week, and then after two months of the cycle, you'll have potentially eight ministry reports to claw through individually and then fix them one by one. And if you neglect your error reports for the maximum allowed six months because you're busy taking care of patients and trying to maintain some work-life balance, then you could potentially have 20 ministry error reports to slog through. The sheer volume becomes unmanageable with each report containing multiple lines of text and numbers like this. The significant factor is that you must keep track of them. Some of you may be thinking that this doesn't apply to you as you don't use the MOH, the ministry error reports, and you are using the reports in your EMR. However, we have also found that even if you and your staff are working off of the error reports in your EMR, the errors are not organized as they are in our practice care report. Let's take a look at the practice care program report. Each regular interval report you receive will report on the outstanding errors. With practice care, between our regular monthly or quarterly reports, we reconcile your errors with RA. And if they have been resubmitted and fixed, we don't report on them in your following report from us. We only report on all outstanding errors. So let's get to the next part of the webinar and show you how to fix three common errors that we see day in and day out, EH2, PAA, and A2A. Let's start with the error EH2, which means a new version code is required. What is this code? EH2 is by far the most common error code that a physician receives. You receive this error when there is an issue with the version code build with this claim. Typical scenarios are when a patient's health card has expired and the version code is invalid, you have a wrong or old version code that was submitted, or no version code was in the claim that was submitted. The top image is how you see an EH2 error code on a ministry error report shown in the yellow highlights. The bottom image is how it is represented with our practice care report. We group by error codes as we find it much more efficient to make the same errors 
and fix them all in one shot than to fix error codes in a random order for a patient, like, show, like shown in the ministry error report from top to bottom. To correct an EH2 error, doctors typically have all their patients' front staff get the updated version code. However, our main tip is to call the ministry. For the missing or wrong version code, it's significantly faster and more efficient than calling each patient one by one to get that updated information. The exact steps to carry out are laid out on this slide. Fixing this error becomes even more efficient if you have our practice care reports on outstanding errors as we group errors by error code. This way, you can see all the outstanding errors for that code in a single table. So a call to the ministry for the missing version codes each month or quarter is way more efficient than calling each patient for an updated number, which could be multiple phone calls to each patient if you can't reach them on the initial call. Let's move on to error code PA8. No initial fee was previously paid. What is this code? PAA occurs with specific codes that have a precondition of a code billed and paid in the past. This commonly occurs for the smoking cessation counseling codes, K039 and add-on codes Q042. There needs to be an E079 billed and paid in the past year. In the top image, here's how you can see a PAA error code in the ministry error report, highlighted in yellow. In the bottom image, here's how it is presented in our report. All outstanding PAA errors are grouped together on one table and ordered from top to bottom from oldest to newest. To correct a PAA error, doctors typically keep resubmitting as is or writing them off. We have an easy solution for the common PAA smoking cessation issue so that you can get revenue for the work that you've done and the service that you provided. The exact steps to carry out are laid out on this slide. Number one, review the notes for that visit. Number two, create a new claim with EO79 and an appropriate assessment or counseling code relevant to the visit. And number three, submit the new invoice bill. Again, fixing this error becomes even more efficient if you have our practice care report module on outstanding errors as we group errors by error codes. This way, you can see all the outstanding errors for that code in a single table, and you can go into each patient with a PAA and create a new claim. Let's move on to the third and last error code we will fix today, the A2A. The patient is underage or overage for this service. So what is this code? The A2A appears when the service code billed has a patient age restriction and the patient the code that was billed for does not fit in the age restriction. This commonly happens with the periodic health visit codes, the K017 for a child, the K130 for an adolescent between 16 and 17 years of age, the K131 for adults aged 18 to 64, and the K132 for adults that are 65 and older. In the top image, here's how you can see the age-related error within the ministry report shown in the yellow highlight. In the bottom image is how it's represented within our report, grouped on one table for this error code. To correct an A2A error, it simply needs to be submitted for the right billing code. So if a K131 was billed on a patient who is 66 years old, you need to change the bill to K132 and resubmit it to the ministry. It's that simple. However, we have noticed that this code typically slips through the cracks and many doctors forget to fix these errors even though it's so easy and quick to fix. Again, it may be that the ministry error report is too hard to read and walk through one file at a time, line item by line item. Whereas using our practice care module on outstanding errors, you can easily see all errors in one table for this code you can go to each patient with A2A, check their age, and then rebill with the right service code. It's that easy. That concludes our walkthrough of the three most common error codes. Let's wrap up this section with our top three best practices for errors. To reduce the number of rejected claims, first consider submitting your billings every day if you can, or at least once a week. Don't leave submissions to once a month, as you may miss the cutoff if the ministry doesn't process it in time for the monthly 18th deadline. If that happens, you may not get paid for your billings in your next MOH deposit. Also, submitting any errors from the ministry more often comes in smaller batches and sooner, which is more efficient for your staff to tackle. Second, increasing the efficiency of error reconciliation by using the practice care report from Dr. Care. When you get our practice care report, address errors right away, within the week ideally. Get them completed before your next submission so that they're not accumulating over time. Third, 
have a good understanding of the billing codes. Here are two useful links from the ministry to error codes and the OHIP bulletin. You can also find them in the description box below. In summary, getting critical error information from a ministry error report means you are deciphering lines and lines of text and codes. You may have to do this over multiple ministry error reports over weeks or months. Contrast this to our practice care report module on errors. It's laid out in tables in the right format with actual patient names, needs, dollar figures, is easy to scan and read, and it contains more than just the previous month's data. We even go back to the last five months and last fiscal periods to give you more insight into your practice's health. I hope this webinar has helped explain the differences between your ministry error reports and our practice care report module on rejected billings and outstanding errors. Lastly, we can help fix your billing errors. Complementary to our practice care service, our billing care service alleviates the pain of billing submissions and managing and correcting billing errors when you are using an EMR. We work with all EMRs to deliver a streamlined and cost-effective solution. Whether you are a family physician, specialist, working in a big practice or small clinic, we provide comprehensive financial reporting and transparency and support you in submitting and correcting your billings to make sure that you're always optimizing your revenue and staying on track of your billings. That is the end of our webinar. On behalf of Dr. Care, thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions or have feedback on this webinar, please feel free to contact me anytime. My contact information is listed on this slide have a great day.